and all of us, my brothers and sisters, my siblings, and my nieces and nephews today that are proceeding down the same avenue that you know I proceeded. Some of them, um, police officer retired, then I went into business, and then I had uh, city council and state senate. I'm only in politics since 1998, even though some of you think I'm there 100 years. <laughs> and, uh, I've only gotten into politics since, since 1998. And so our kids are going into the police departments and into uh, the uh, Wall Street and into different uh, entities here in this great city, uh, biotech and biomed and opening up opportunities for our families to be able to grow. And uh, uh, so they fought for that right there. And, and my parents uh, thought that was the biggest thing that they ever got. Giving non-citizens the right to vote undermines the entire electoral process. It decreases the incentive to become a citizen and the duties and dilutes the voting rights of the American citizen. It just dilutes them. And like you said, they're not gonna, they're just gonna keep going to create and continue to create more benefits and more benefits and who's gonna pay for these benefits at the end of the day? It took Rome 600 years. We're only 200 and change and, and, and we're fastly approaching uh, our demise if we keep this up. American citizenship should be respected and rights bestowed are protected. And that's the most important thing that we can do, is protect the rights that our forefathers gave us. And that is something that's important to each and everybody in this room, each and every one of your families, and each and every part of this great city, state, and nation. So we gotta make sure that we continue to fight for that. Americans have fought and they've died for that right to vote. It's our obligation to ensure that the right <coughs> is reserved for American citizens. American citizenship is a privilege and honor. We must continue to hold citizenship the highest regard so that the immigrants will want to become American citizens, like my mom and dad did, and like many of your parents and some of the people here in this very room. The New York City Council must not trample on the rights of our citizens for their own personal gain. They should instead sponsor citywide voter registration for citizens. They want to get involved, they want people to get involved in the, in the process, then get out there and sponsor reg registration drives. Get out there and increase voter participation through engagement and assisting immigrants in becoming citizens, American citizens in this great nation. That's what we want to do. Yes. At one time, there was a citizenship day holiday that was celebrated in New York City. I'm familiar with this because if you are, if you've been to the Transit Museum, the cars have the old time posters from the 1940s and 1950s, and there was a cart for celebrating Citizenship Day. Yeah. That's something that's gone by the wayside. That's gone. It would be nice to see it re reinvigorated, brought back. And Brooklyn Day, if we remember we had Brooklyn here in June. Yes. I remember all the bases they used to bring out and open up our bases and our military used to move around to different well, locations. Well, they did a good job of taking that away from the that, that, They did indeed. Yeah. They want to take that day. They're not going to get that day. We still have that day. Okay. I want to mention, or just, uh, I find it incredible we live in this or Orwellian world where we even have to debate this issue of citizenship. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me that they're even thinking about something like this. Is there We're anything? We're not debating it. It's going to become, if, you, if we don't spark, if we don't wake up, this is going to become a reality. This is going to become real. What is, uh, my, so my, question, my question, uh, Senator Golden, my question to you is this. Is there anything, you're part of the Republican state majority of the Senate, right? My question is, is there anything that you and the other Republicans in the state Senate can do to try to stop this insanity from happening? I'm going to hate to tell you, you're not going to like my answer. <laughs> The answer is no. Municipalities can do what they wish when it comes to their electoral process. We can take it to the Supreme Court. We can try to put uh, legislation out there, but I think it would be challenged, and I don't think we have the ability to do it. We as citizens have to be able to fight the good fight here from within. We have to be able to get out there. We have to be on the media. We have to be in our community groups, our community boards. We've got to be very vocal with our city council people, and we've got to let them know that we are fed up of this. We are not going to put up with it. So are there any hearings on this that we could attend? Oh, there'll be hearings, but let me tell you, there'll be shams. The object of the game is we got to get petition processes going. We have to get signatures. We have to let the people know in the city council that we're not only going to vote them out, we're going to turn around and sh t turn this and shut this process down and legalize this process the way it should be and keep it the way it has been for 200 and plus years. And that's giving the ability for a non-citizen to become an American citizen. Give them a pathway, let them come in. If they're here legally, and we give them the pathway to get the citizenship, then I think that's what we should be doing. Citizenship 
is and should be a basic requirement for voting. Yep. Plain and simple. We live in the greatest city, in the greatest state, in the greatest nation in the world. And of course, if it goes down and New York does this, how many other cities, towns, and villages will do the same? Oh, this is where, this is what, this is the crux. This is the crux right here. If it's allowed to happen here, it will not only change this city's outcome, but it will change cities across this great country, and it will change the outcome of the national future elections. national elections for congressional and U.S. Yeah. Senate seats and for the President of the United States of America. And we cannot let that happen. God bless us all. The problem, I've got a problem. And the problem I got problems too, I but I like that. It's not a joke. It's, it's not a joke. It's, it's, I got a problem because the truth can't come out. You're standing here and speaking is one of you're a wonderful man, and you make a great presentation. We tried with the Tea Party, we went out and we were, the, the IRS went against us, okay? Now there's no, there's no scandal there. Now Mrs. Clinton, I was with some people this weekend at, at, at a level of sophistication and education you cannot believe. And the truth of the matter is nothing has been brought out. Now at your level, I understand you're not being involved in it. But when you realize the things that these people have done, I think everybody does in this room knows that. No, they, they do. don't. Yeah, they do. It's been all. It's been Did, in the newspaper. Let me tell you something. Fact. Let me just say, tell you one yeah. fact. One steady fact. There are 180 countries in the United States. When Mrs. Clinton's <laughs> in the world, when Mrs. Clinton's emails were hacked, they had those hackers got into those. Not only got the American information. They got everything that was being sent from these countries to the American government. So what happened was we lost the credibility of a country out of keeping their secrets. So they, they stopped sending us their secrets. I think the aid that nobody's and nobody's said, to, but nobody's that they've been hacked. All right, that's number one. Uh, that she herself uh, transmitted uh, emails that were top secret is the issue at hand here. They have not yet been able to prove or that this nation has been able to prove they, they've got a, that they've she's got, me, they've got the guy coming the in. Oh, right, yeah. We had a Romanian cab driver that broke into the court system. And he, used, he was quoted as saying his, to his lawyers that he would look at her emails and then he would go out into the backyard and work in his garden. Okay? <laughs> and he, would, he was the one that broke that this guy, Sidney Blumenthal, was uh, the king went in there. Now, if you've ever had the pleasure of reading Sidney Blumenthal, by the second page, you need a shower. By the third, you need a bath. Okay? And I just wanted to say, we have to get, I want to go out and, and it's a purple shirt or a green shirt, and I want 500 people with me, and I want to be able to stand in a group, in a rally. We, the city of New York, and us, the American people, we go out there. They put 1,500, 2,000 people out there on a street like that. We cannot even get up. No, I, I can't even get up. I, I, I think that you, you brought up an George interesting, Soros. Uh, an interesting <laughs> point here. Uh, like I said, the uh, I know that you pointed out some things here that are still being somewhat debated. But I will tell you that uh, what the government did when it came to the conservative groups, uh, and they did have them audited, and that was proven. Uh, so they are, they no longer uh, today, uh, to a large degree, are doing it. To, so we hear uh, because they've been outed, and we understand what they've done. So the whole purpose here, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure that we have a new president in the White House come November. And you know we're going to have a fight here as to Donald Trump. We're going to have a fight through Kasich. We're going to have a fight over Rubio or over Cruz. Who who it should be. Uh, I don't care who it is, as long as we get down to a individual that's going to run for president, because I strongly believe that this nation will not put Hillary Clinton in as its leader. So not regardless of who we have as the presidential choice for the Republican Party. So I'm hoping that we get through this uh, mess over the next two weeks and that we have a candidate and that there is doesn't go to a broken convention. We'll see what happens. That's very possible. But that still brings it down. And we want to get this moving as quickly as possible. Because they're having Sanders and Clinton are having a field day with us. And uh, you can see what's happened in Chicago. You can see what's happened in uh, others, uh, other states as well. 
uh, and you're going to see more and more of that happening because they're going to send people in. So that's not good. Not good for our cities, our state, our nation, not good for the presidency uh, in November. So we need to be able to get that then, and only then, will we know for sure that we are not getting uh, individual. We would never do this to the Democrats because we, we know we'd get caught. We, we know we'd get out of it, and we wouldn't be that stupid. But the, the, this Obama, this presidency, has done this, has allowed this, and has impacted a number of conservative groups across this great nation, and that's just plain wrong and shouldn't be allowed to happen. Including one of the presidential candidates. Senator, yes. <laughs> Senator you were right to speak against the decriminalization of minor crimes like, you know, drinking in public and urinating. Just last week, you may know about this, uh, a man was caught spitting on, on a subway platform and the police caught him and they went to issue a summons. Correct. And this man was wanted for murder. And the police wound up arresting, arresting him for murder. Can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. I'm going to take, uh, here's what I'm going to take three more questions. And what I'm going to do, I know we want to talk about delegates. I'm going to leave my top dog here because I have another event. I didn't think it was going to take this long, and I have to run to the next meeting. Uh, James is much better versed than I am, believe it or not, when it comes to the delegates and how they are, um, uh, how they are listed and how you become a delegate here in this presidential election coming up. Yes, sir. Just to put on, you mentioned that there's uh, nobody listens to what they say. Believe me, if you check the website on Linux, you will see that people do listen to what the Tea Party says. If you check what's going on. Well, I, I happen to agree with you. And you know what? The Tea Party is something that's very much alive around this nation uh, and other conservative groups as well. So it's important, as you can see, uh, .org, uh, the Democratic or Sanders uh, group, what do they call them? Move on. No, move on. Move on.org. Move on. yeah. move on. What do they call his group? Soros. No, they call them, they sometimes call them Democrats. The losers. Uh, is that what they are? Did I hear socialists? I think I heard socialists. All right? Two more questions. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you, uh, do you know of anything being done to help the officer who shockingly was found guilty in that shooting case in the Brooklyn. Uh, there, are, uh, there are two issues here, yeah. and they're very serious. Yeah. A, uh, the judge, the individual officer had a choice. A, to go before a jury trial or go before the judge. He chose to take a jury trial. Um, the jury trial uh, went and presented his case, and they talked about how he didn't assist the individual when he was down, and how he called uh, his partner or whatever before he was, and didn't assist the individual. <laughs> And I don't want to be cold here uh, by any means. Um, he probably should have administered first aid, and that's what he's required to do. But guess what? That had nothing to do with the initial shot. That's what should have been the only um, issue on the table for those juries to consider, was what happened when that shot went off. Now, this officer was scared to death. This officer opened that door. This officer didn't see somebody and shoot him. The officer's gun went off and it bounced off the wall and then it hit the individual. Mm -hmm. So it was a ricochet that killed that individual. Mm -hmm. So there are two things happening having been found guilty. A, he has to go for a sentencing, right? So the judge could come out and give him a light sentence. So therefore, he'd have to think twice if, in fact, he wants to go for a retrial. And he has to find grounds, but I think he's got the grounds. He's got the grounds for retrial. So if I were him, and I think that's the, the, the A, I get probably, <coughs> I might look for a new team of lawyers, but not having said that, because I wasn't there, so I'm not going to blame the lawyers here, but I, I really take looking at my legal representation very strongly, and I look at taking this to the next level for retrial, because I do believe he's found not guilty in a real court with real jurors that are sitting there studying the case at the actual shot of the bullet, not what happened after the shooting, but what happened when the bullet went off and why the bullet went off in the first place. I think that's what has to look, be looked at here. Uh, His partner was also let go. The jury, uh, the partner was let go the very next day. The jury acted on what it was presented to. Uh, the jury could be the three people sitting around his table. Uh, and you know, there are people that are in the jury that uh, have stronger personalities than others. And of course, the presentation whether the presentation of the defense was stronger than that of the uh, district attorney, I don't know. 
Uh, I wasn't there, but it sounds like it was. So I think the presentation of his case has to be made better the next time if, in fact, he decides to do a retrial. But I'm almost going to bet that the, uh, that the judge gives him a light sentence, uh, if any jail time at all. Uh, and if he does that, the individual officer would have to really reconsider not going for a retrial. But I do believe he should go for a retrial, and I do believe he will be, uh, he will get uh, exonerated. exonerated. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Last you know, question. One more. As far as you know, is there any other country in the world that allows non-citizen to vote? Not that I know of. No, okay. So that's why we live again. Thank you.